All right, well, today we're with Pat Sullivan, the Executive Director of Naval Information Warfare Systems Command. Pat, you're at the center of the big digital storm. Please give us some insight into the state of naval information warfare, both challenges and opportunities. So in terms of challenges in the information warfare domain, you know, we're really migrating from a legacy infrastructure into kind of a future digital environment. And so that's really required to accelerate and streamline the delivery of capabilities uh, so we can actually move at the pace of technology and actually outpace our adversaries in their ability to adopt, uh, rapid, rapidly adopt new technologies as well. What would you say though is the great opportunity that you're addressing right now both in terms of technologies and capabilities. Yeah, so one of the big opportunities that we have is really to migrate into the digital environment. And so what that really means is that we're, we're looking, or, or we have um, kind of captured the architecture, information warfare architecture in a digital environment. And we're also creating digital twins of the individual systems that we develop and deploy. And the combination of those two things allow us to actually test and evaluate capability before we actually deliver it. Uh, and so that's really allow us to, to you know, increase our um, speed and agility in order to deliver capability. So an example of, of that that we're actually uh, working on right now is that we have created kind of a, a digital model, a digital twin of the Theodore Roosevelt Strike Group. Okay, and so that really comprises about you know, 25 ships and shore sites across all the information warfare systems that we deliver. It's really a pretty massive effort. Uh, and that will really look at how we're going to, a digital representation of how we are going to fight in the future. I would imagine that will really accelerate the procurement cycle, which you have to do nowadays to get good information technology into the force. Yeah, one of the great, um, opportunities that comes with creating digital twins is that we can now develop in kind of our the environment that we're going to deploy in. Okay, so an example is that our, uh, our CANE system, which is our enterprise network system afloat, uh, we have digital representations of that that uh, developers can now use to actually develop all the applications in the target environment. Uh, and so, you know, the, the days where we have to stand up a separate laboratory and then develop capability in that laboratory and then bring it over to the real hardware and develop and test on that hardware, we've eliminated most of that, the, the, the administration that goes behind that and taken years off the development life cycle of these systems by moving into this digital environment. How will that affect the training? of Navy personnel on these new systems. Yeah, that, that's a really great, uh, there's a really great opportunity that we're also leveraging there is that uh, now that we have digital twins of the capability, we can deliver that training to any sailor anywhere in the world. So you don't have to just go to a schoolhouse that has the hardware and the applications running on that. This digital representation, uh, representation exists in the cloud. And so all you need is a laptop and a network connection and you can sign in and actually do that training from, any, from wherever you're at. Uh, both ashore and afloat. What would you say are the most important developments that have to come to pass in order to make this a reality? So I, I'm not sure there's a, we need to uh, bring the, the DevSecOps kind of environment that we put together to scale. And so right now we've created the initial instance where we want everybody to develop in so they can land on, on our enterprise networks uh, and we've provided that capability out there. But today everybody's not using it. Okay, and so what we really need is we need really the full scale adoption of DevSecOps environment in, you know, in concert with DOD and, and the Department of the Navy CIO kind of um, um, requirements to actually move into that environment. We're providing it today, but we need the rest of the Navy to actually adopt that to, to move out and really bring the power of this digital transformation to, to bear. You mentioned the cloud, of course, and everyone in the military is moving into the cloud. And Frankly, the cloud seems designed perfectly for Navy needs, especially afloat. What other technologies or capabilities do you have to count on? Well, you know, so digital representation also makes sure that we need to migrate our data into kind of the, the uh, 
the modern environment. So we have a lot of legacy data, a lot of legacy databases that we really need to bring into this digital representation so we can actually use data science techniques on it to actually make better decisions. So that's better decisions in command and control to present that data to our warfighter, better decisions in our business to actually make sure we're spending our money correctly, or better decisions to actually identify technology that meet the requirements. And so that's another area that we're really pushing on uh, right now to help improve the business of the Navy, the business of acquisition. Let's look at the general overview of the term naval information warfare. Obviously that takes into account adversaries who are really ramping up in this arena across the entire spectrum, every domain. How are you adjusting and planning to meet the challenges they will introduce in coming years? Yeah, so I think we've really studied the vulnerabilities of our systems pretty hard, and so we understand how people might attack us using their own information warfare capabilities. And so we're working closely and closing the gaps that we have that are out there in our systems. When you talk information warfare, you know, you get classified pretty quickly in terms of the kind of capabilities we provide and what we can do. And so all I will say to that is that um, we, we study the adversary, we study ourselves, uh, we, we think we have a pretty good understanding of, of both red and blue in that environment. And we also look that, um, you know, the Navy's not going to fight the fight alone. This is a joint fight. It's a joint fight in all domain warfare. And information warfare both enables all the other warfare domains and is a domain in and of itself to actually project power, uh, you know, for, for our national interests. And so we're, we're dedicated and committed to making sure that we get this right. Facing adversaries, is it steady as she goes, or do you expect course changes? Um, so, in the information warfare domain, we're under attack every single day. So, right. this is not the kind of thing where you wait to, to get to phase two escalations. Is that every single day, you know, our adversaries are probing our networks, trying to steal our information, trying to understand how we intend to fight the war. And so we're, we're committed to making sure that, that, that they, they don't have access to that information, that they had access in the past to close down those paths for the future. Yesterday, a panel of Sea Service flag officers were addressing the issue of are we ready to fight in a contested environment? They tended to agree that we are. Do you feel that's true, especially with regards to information warfare, and what are the trend lines there? Yeah, I think we're ready to fight in a contested environment. We've, uh, you know, we've provided modern capability to our warfighters. We've trained them to be able to operate and maintain those systems. Uh, we understand we're going to have to operate in a, in a communications denied environment, and so we're prepared to do that, and we're training to do that. So I think that we're, in the information warfare domain, we're pretty, pretty confident that uh, we're going to be able to actually um, provide the required capabilities when called upon by our nation. With regard to the future, what do you see as the biggest potential stumbling block for the Navy to achieve what currently constitute its plans for IW? So, um, you know, it's really, what I would think is that the Navy um, is an institution with hundreds of years of, of tradition and history. And so, uh, and so a stumbling block may be is that we rely too much on that history and not, an, and not enough focus on what the future may bring. And so we need to blend our experience with our history and our traditions with actually the new capabilities and technologies that are going to be deployed against us and try to figure out how to close that gap to make sure that we're prepared for the future war and not the last war. It seems to me that your digital transformation would address that and take that full on. Now, the digital transformation does address that, uh, but like I said, we haven't fully adopted a digital world yet within, within the Department of the Navy, and that's one of the challenges that we're addressing today. And at NAVWAR, we're actually providing the infrastructure required for the Navy to adopt that digital transformation uh, at the industrial scale. Okay. Any particular technologies or capabilities that you need from industry? Um, so, you know, the ability to rapidly move through uh, digital design to assure that the systems are going to work on the target platforms that we're going to actually put those on. 
uh, training for our workforce to actually make sure that we're fully engrossed and embedded in a DevSecOps environment. Not just the technical workforce, but also uh, the operational workforce. That's the ops piece in the DevSec, DevSecOps, is to make sure that we're exposing our capabilities to the warfighter early, getting their feedback early, and consistently in up, uh, um, updating those systems to make sure they're relevant to warfighter needs. When you look at the work that your system command is engaged in right now, what comes forefront to your mind? Um, so, I think our syscom is on the leading edge of technology and the leading edge of warfare. You know, information is going to be kind of, the access to information, the ability to deny our adversaries the same, uh, is going to really be the secret sauce that gives our warfighters a competitive advantage in the future. And so it's really exciting to be a part of this syscom at this point in history to, to really move the Navy along for what the future war is going to look like. One last question on the future. If your plans come to fruition, and if you're able to adjust as you wish to changing events, what will things look like for sailors and Marines in five years where your systems command has been able to empower its work? I think um, what, what that will look like is that every sailor and Marine will have some understanding of the electromagnetic environment, the cyber environment in which we operate in this information warfare domain. Um, they'll understand the vulnerabilities that that brings and how to close and how to close those vulnerabilities down when they actually uh, go go in, and get in contact with the adversary. So I think that that and by understanding fully understanding those opportunities and vulnerabilities that information warfare brings, uh, that it will fully be fully integrated into our planning cycles uh, so we can take all the advantage of that opportunity that we can while mitigating the impact of any vulnerabilities for the future. Okay. Any closing thoughts you'd like to offer? Um, all I would say is that, um, so, you know, we have, um, even though we're the, we're the high technology kind of arm of the military uh, or of the Navy, um, we operate out of some old World War II facilities uh, here in San Diego today. And so those facilities really aren't suited for the types of uh, technology that we need to develop and bring to bear for the nation. And so um, we've got a big plan to revitalize our facilities to, to uh, make them more secure and more suitable for the high technology environment that we work on. And so we're working with the city of San Diego uh, and the San Diego Association of Governments uh, to actually do a public-private partnership to actually revitalize uh, our facilities to provide um, um, kind of something that um, any high technology, high technology company would be proud of. Uh, and so it's, uh, it's pretty exciting to work in that environment today to show that we can not only provide that high technology for the future, but we'll position ourselves to actually um, be a major provider of high technology far into the future for the nation. Okay then. Well, Pat, thank you very much for the time and for your insights on the future of Naval Information Warfare. This is Bob Ackerman, the editor of Signal Magazine. Thanking you for watching as part of Signal Media, the video series.